prayer in your cabin. Read those books in a blink. Oh yeah. Grab yourself a hot drink because you're watching how to train your Gavin. Yep, that's me. Hey guys, welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin. You're probably wondering, why is this a week two vlog and there isn't a week one vlog? Um, <laughs> so yeah, I did do a, a vlog last week and I was editing the footage. Today it's Monday. That means we are on week two of believe a which is fantastic. I'm so happy with how it's been going. Honestly, the amount of support on Twitter and on the Instagram page and just on YouTube in general, like thank you so much for all the support for Believe a Thon. It really does mean the world to me. I was sitting down editing the vlog for Believe a Thon week one today and I hated it. <laughs> I just really didn't like the vlog. I didn't think a lot happened in it. I there were some books that I wasn't really a big fan of, aka the Roll Doll books. It didn't feel like a May vlog. You know what I mean? Like, it just didn't feel like me. So I was just a bit sad and down about that. Last week was up and down as well. It's a bit of a hard one. Last week, I really do, well, I really did kind of bury myself under believe -a -thon just to like try and forget about the world for a bit. A lot of things did happen. Mental health was a bit shoddy, but you know, it was up and down and there were some great things to celebrate and other things not so much. And it's just weird. It was just a weird week. So I thought it was best to like, skip it all together. But I do want to just quickly mention before I get into all the fun of this reading vlog because I, I am going to preface this by saying I am feeling so much better and I am really looking forward to this week and what this week is going to entail. I am so excited, honestly I really am. I, I just think last week it was just a little bit hard so I'd rather be real and honest with you guys about it first before I move on and stuff but obviously we are now in lockdown again. Um, I live in the UK so it was announced that we are in lockdown again. It's a little bit harder this time because I don't have Oscar with me anymore. And I was finding it a little bit more lonely than I usually did at the last lockdown. At least I had like Oscar and I do have Suki. I still have Suki. He's my other cat and I love him to bits. Um, but Oscar, 15 years, man. <laughs> so I I found it quite hard last week to get into the believe -a thon and just like, ah, I'm doing this, we're going into lockdown and I just have this huge weight on me about, you know, losing a, a family member, really. So I am, I'm getting so much better, I promise. <laughs> it's hilarious because I'm saying that, oh, I am getting better, I swear, I, I am. It's just a bit hard. I do realise as well, I put a lot of pressure on myself, I do. This week my goal is I'm not going to put any pressure on myself. I realise what I'm doing is I'm, like with lockdown and everything, it's very isolating, like, so I've got a plan of action. I've got a plan of action. What I need to do is I just need to, you know, spend some time outdoors. Um, obviously, like, you know, local parks and things and just, like, getting some fresh air. I think that's what I'm missing. I, I feel too claustrophobic just being inside all the time. So what I need to do is I need to go out. That's, like, the first step. I just need to go out. I'm not going to go to, like, shops and things. Like, that's not essential or anything. But just to get some fresh air and to get outside and just get away for, for a little bit. Um, I think that's just what I need. Last week, all I did, I just, I was just indoors for the whole thing. And just looking back at it, when I was watching the vlog, I was like, <sighs> I, I can see how bad I'm getting. I can see it in my eyes. And I just, I knew, I knew. And I was trying to hide that. And it just, it didn't feel right. So week one vlog, it's gone. It's never seen the light of day. So I want to sit down and chat first before getting into this vlog because I want this, I, I'm so excited for this week. Th this is the thing, I felt like last week, Believe Thumb was still on, I was like, I'm so excited for this. I just didn't have like anything during the week to kind of like have a goal towards or anything like that. It was just reading and it's great. And I, was, I do still love reading, I love reading so much, but it's, sometimes it's just not enough. So this week, I'm gonna have all my positive thoughts. I'm gonna go outside, get some fresh air, I'm gonna read what I really want to read and I feel like, again, like I know you guys are saying like with my TBR game and making me read things I don't want to read. I do want to read everything that I put on my TBR game, I really do. They're on my TBR for a reason, it's books I want to read, but they weren't really books that I really wanted to read kind of thing. The, the TBR game is necessary for me to put on books that I, I have and I own and I need to read, I'm just not as excited for. And it's a fun game, I, I love playing it, like seriously, I love playing it, it's one of the best videos. 
I make my, for myself personally, I have so much fun. But I think what the problem with was last week was that I was bogging myself down with it. I wasn't making it fun for myself and just with everything else on top of that, it just got too much. So I had my moment, can wipe the tears away. Let's talk about the books I'm reading this week because I have like, I'm so fortunate and so lucky that I get sent arcs of books that I'm really excited for. So that is what this week is gonna entail. It's gonna be a week of me reading books that I'm so super excited for and I feel like it's really gonna reinvigorate my reading and really reinvigorate my love for vlogging because um, I was feeling a little bit down about vlogging and my ability to do it. This week, it's just gonna be me reading books I genuinely love and getting back into vlogging, getting back into the routine of things. That's what I need. I've just been out of routine, I've been out of sync, and I just need to get back on that. So that's what I'm doing this week. So last night I did a live midnight feast reading sprint on my channel. It was so much fun. I honestly, when I do reading sprints, so when I do a live show, it really does take me out of it. And I feel like a lot of people did see that spark in me last night. And yeah, it's like things like that I really do love doing and enjoy doing. And it was exactly what I needed. It was exactly what I needed. So I did that for around about three hours. It was a bit of a midnight feast kind of live show. I drank peach snaps and lemonade because <laughs> I'm classy like that. And I started reading Amari and the Night Brothers by B.B. Alston. Yeah, I was chatting with everyone. Thank you so much to everyone who did tune in and for helping me escape the world for a bit. Uh, I'm not gonna cry again. So I started Amari and the Night Brothers during that live show and I am loving this so far. I will say what this is about. I do want to first say what it is I will be reading this week because I want some structure to this reading vlog. I feel like having, you know, the whole anticipated arcs kind of angle of this vlog might help with me having a goal this week. The first one I will be reading is Amari and the Night Brothers by Baby Austin. This one has been said to be like Men in Black meets Artemis Fowl and it follows Amari whose brother has gone missing and one day she finds this briefcase in his bedroom or like, well something happened first but that's not in the synopsis so I'm not going to mention it just in case it's a spoiler. I'm just saying what is like mentioned in synopsis. I don't want to spoil anything for you guys especially since this doesn't come out until January. But she ends up coming across a briefcase and inside is this nomination for her to go to this, well, it's kind of like a whole other world, but it's, it is rooted in our world, but it's just something we don't see. But it is a world of supernatural creatures and all of that kind of stuff. So there is a Bureau of Supernatural Affairs and I guess that's where the whole Men in Black angle comes into it a bit because Amari then ends up going to this place and she's trying to find out what happened to her brother um, and she thinks this is the best lead. But there are things like fairies and witches and dragons and aliens and all of that kind of stuff. So like, so far it's been phenomenal. I've been really enjoying this so far and reading it during the live, it was, it was fantastic. I was loving this so much. Currently I am on page 116. So I've already, you know, got a nice chunk of this read. But what I will say is that I've been loving the integration from going from like the, the normal world into the fantasy world and well I mean I say fantasy world it still feels quite real it's like told in a way where it feels like this could actually be real so that's what I'm really liking about this it feels so authentic and this is Baby Olsen's debut as well and so far I'm like this doesn't read like a debut this feels quite seasoned like I'm I love this world building already it's just so imaginative so far too so this is what I've been thinking about this one so far. I was gonna, I, I was supposed to see what the books I was gonna be reading were before I went into this field, but I'm loving this so far, so this is what I'm reading first. Then I will also be reading The Hatmakers by Tamsin Merchant. I don't know a whole lot about this one either, but this one also comes out in January. And this one, it follows Cordelia and she's from a family where they weave enchantments into hats. The only other thing I know about this is that Cordelia's father goes missing at sea. And yeah, she, oh, there's also ancient rivalries. It has a lot to do with like family history, but also like ma the magic of, that they put into the hats and things like that. I'm so intrigued. I don't know what the plot is really. I don't know what it's gonna entail, but I'm so excited to find out, so excited. Also, Tamsin Merchant, she was in Salem and she was phenomenal in Salem. It's one of my favorite TV shows, but also in the Tudors. And I love that show as well, so. We're on a winner here. Then I also want to read May, My Dad and the End of Rainbow by Benjamin Dean. This is an LGBTQ plus middle grade novel and I don't really think I've read a uh, out and proud middle grade novel before. I have read books where there have been some LGBTQ plus themes. Not really out and proud, although saying that, Rick by Alex Gino, 
that was an LGBTQ plus middle grade as well. That's one that I've read a few months back now. There isn't really a synopsis or anything on this, but I do love this, this proof edition. It does follow a boy who I think his dad turns out to be gay and it's that kind of family dynamic and how a family copes with that, I think, maybe. I don't know. Maybe it's an exploration of the world. I just love the artwork, though. I love the artwork. And the artwork is by Sandhya Prabhat. So I'm really excited. I mean, and once I've read this as well, I'll be able to summarise it so much better for you. And then the last one will be The Forest of Moon and Sword by Amy Raphael. I am going to be buddy reading this with Steph from Steph Loves. So I will link her channel down below. This is going to be a really fun one because I think this is set during the witch trials because the the main character's mum gets accused of being a witch and she's taken away to take trial I think down in London something like that and the main character goes on this journey to go and save her mum and it just sounds great as well I've heard fantastic things about this from NetGalley so I'm excited and main stuff I'm going to be buddy reading this so I really do want to do some Instagram lives this week, hopefully with Steph, so that we can read this together. I think that'll be really awesome. But yeah, uh, that is, well, this is my four book TBR for this vlog, and I'm really excited to get into it. And that, I think that's all I've got for this first update. I don't really want to ramble on too much. I know I started off pretty heavy there, but I do want to assure you guys that I am better, <laughs> contrary to popular belief, but I am feeling better. And I know this week is going to be great. I am manifesting it. I'm already feeling so positive and upbeat about this week, so fingers crossed, fingers crossed, <laughs> it, I keep up that momentum. And please make sure if you are also taking part of Believeathon that you are taking care of your mental health as well and just taking care of yourself in general. I'll see you on the other side. I'm, I'm, I think I need another drink. <laughs>
It's now 3 in the afternoon on Wednesday and I've been for my walk. The skies have turned very, very grey so it looks like it's about a pour down of rain and I cannot wait. Some of the best days are when I'm just sitting, looking out the window, watching the rain as I'm reading. Love it. So I came back just in time, I think. Had such a nice walk around Southwell Park. It was such a breath of fresh air and just what I needed, I think, just to get out and about and moving and just feels, you know, so good. We also went into Costa right after as well uh, to try out that purple one latte. It's like, if you've had the purple ones from Quality Street, which is probably my favourite sweet in the Quality Street tin. Oh, I love it so much. Uh, and then I tried the purple one latte and it's actually really nice. I want to try each of the festive drinks on the Costa menu as well. So yeah, that was a nice little change as well. And I love their cups as well. I love them so much. That's a polar bear and a penguin on a Christmas tree. <laughs> so last night I did finish Amari and the Night Brothers by Baby Alston. I'm giving this one five stars. This was really, really good. Loved it from start to finish. It was so action packed and there wasn't ever really a dull moment in this. I was really interested to see where the story would go, especially by the end, because this is the first in a series and things were moving at quite a fast speed. I found it really interesting seeing Amari adapt to the supernatural world. That is pretty much right in front of everyone's eyes, really. It's kind of integrated in the the normal world and the Bureau of Supernatural Affairs kind of, it is a bit like Men in Black and it's just kind of trying to keep the balance between like the real world and the supernatural world and keeping things in check but there are lots of different departments so we have Amari who wants to be a junior agent. It's really interesting seeing Amari coming from a really poor neighbourhood, everybody's looked down on her her entire life and even when she comes to this Bureau of Supernatural Affairs there are lots of other kids who look down on her and she doesn't have the best time. She's always getting knocked back by a lot of people. And what I love about Mari is that she takes those knocks and she just stands back up and she comes back swinging. Like she never gives up and I love that about Mari. This review is going to be spoiler free. I will not give away any plot points. I will say there was a really big twist towards the end that I didn't really see coming. I expected it to go a different way and the different way would have been obvious but then but I don't know maybe it's just me but there was a twist and I, I didn't see it coming and I found that great but it made sense, so like, it was really well done. I really enjoyed it. So I thought this was written fantastically. So I did find this written so, so well. Yeah, I can't wait for the sequel. It leaves it on such a, well, yeah, I'm not saying. <laughs> but it does make you want to read more. And I'm so invested in this world as well. There's so much of this world I want to explore. I want to see what Amari can do in this world. She's still very new to it and she's still learning. And everything is more of a longer process for her. Whereas other people can pick it up really well and quite fast. Amari doesn't have the easiest time coming to grips with it. But it just makes her such a relatable character. It makes her feel so much more real. And I love her. I think she's fantastic. I love some of her friendships as well. They are like so well done and I loved seeing those develop. I love the world building in this as well. There's just so many different magical moments that it isn't overtly magical. It feels quite real as well. There are lots of different kinds of creatures and we do have this competitive trial aspect to this as well. So if you are a fan of the trials aspect, then you will love this book because I know like Nevermore, The Trials of American Crow has the same kind of thing. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, it's a bit like that with, you know, this big obstacle course kind of thing and, it, you know, like having to prove herself in this new society. And it's just, I loved it. It made each part of it feel high stakes and it meant you got to explore a little bit more of the the world in this as well so I found it really well done. I love the villains as well so the Night Brothers and Maori and the Night Brothers. The Night Brothers are the villains. They're against the Bureau of Supernatural Affairs but yeah I just I think it's great. I think it's great and I, it's hard reviewing an arc because yeah, I can't really spoil it, so <laughs> I would recommend picking this up 100%. It comes out January 19th in America, January 21st in the UK, and those are the only two release dates I know of. Hopefully it does get a whole worldwide release and you pick it up, because I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to pick up the final copy of this, so I loved it. I thought it was great. So this is a great start to this vlog. I'm so glad I wasn't disappointed in this. Five stars. Absolutely loved it. So I'm still on a bit of a fantasy kick, so when I was deciding what to read next from my 
week-long TBR this week. I decided to go for The Hatmakers by Tamsin Merchant. I want more fantasy right now. I can't wait to read the other two books, but I, I need more fantasy because looking out the window now, it looks like it's going to rain. I, oh, love it. So I think I'm going to sit down, cozy up, read some and just, yeah, enjoy myself, you know, put my feet up. I'll probably join some sprints on the Discord as well for Believe-a-thon. Maybe run a couple on Twitter. I'm not sure, but you know, it's very last minute. I know I haven't been as forceful with doing events for Believe-a-thon. I just, I don't want to pressure anyone into having to participate in absolutely everything. I want you guys to tackle it in your own pace. And also I'm just scared to ask people to do stuff. So <laughs> I haven't asked anybody to do anything. Anyway, yes, that's what I'm going to do. Thursday night now and I'm panicking just a little bit because I am I'm only 152 pages into the hat makers I want to finish this tonight and start the forest of moon and sword tomorrow so I can do some reading spins with Steph and then I want to read Me, My Dead and the End of the Rainbow on Saturday because I'm also doing an interview with Ross Montgomery on Sunday and I want to make sure I have everything prepared for that and just like make lots of questions and things for him so yeah, I kind of really wanted <laughs> to have finished this by now. I'm loving it so far. I think this book is absolutely fantastic. I am loving the kind of world that's built here and like the enchantments and how things like starlight and moonlight can, you know, be used for these hats. And there's just like loads of different little beautiful details in this that I'm just absolutely loving. Loving the story so far as well. There have been some really exciting developments so far. There's also been like a really gay moment in this I absolutely loved uh, but I won't say anything else about that but I loved it so much. Anyway I want to talk about this when I finished it. So I did get a couple of parcels today. One of these is from Amy Joyce who wanted to send me some middle grade graphic novels after I mentioned in the Believe It On Live show that I haven't really read any middle grade graphic novels. Thank you so much. Like seriously thank you so much. Didn't need to but you did. Someone opened these up. I also got this from Laura Ellen Anderson. I didn't realise she was going to send me anything but she said she was going to on Twitter so I'll open this one first because it's smaller but on the back I love this because Vincent is a character from one of Laura's book series Amelia Fang and Vincent is Amelia's little brother he looks so cute I love that so it says beware it may contain high levels of cuteness and snot okay while I'm opening this delicately uh, this might take me a little while. I will say today I didn't really do much. I tuned into Jean's live uh, writing sprint with Tasman at T Books and Tasman. So this is Jean at Jean Bookish Thoughts. She did some writing sprints for NaNoWriMo. So I ended up writing some of my middle grade kind of book that I've been writing for a little while. But I haven't written it in quite some time. So I need to get back into that. Okay, I've opened it. <laughs> so this is Pumpkin Post. Oh, oh, I love Vincent so much. He's so cute. So I'm going to take it out of, out of this. I look dead. I look dead. I think it's just like the lighting and the camera. It just makes me look so dead. <laughs> but I'm not, I promise. So this is what Laura sent me. It's just so cute. It's, it's a pin. It is a pin and oh honestly I love Vincent and Squashy so so much. They are two characters from the Amelia Fang series and they are just so cute. Uh, and also there's like this postcard with Amelia reading to Squashy. I have a few postcards from Amelia. <laughs> I have a few postcards from Laura Ellen Anderson now because she has an Etsy store and I've ended up getting some prints and things and some of them have come with postcards. On the back it says pumpkin post 
and only a few little Vincents are out there, and it wouldn't be right if Gav didn't have one. Pumpkin hugs, Tangine! Tangine sent me it. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, if you are an Amelia Fang fan, you will you will understand. Tangine, oh, he is fabulous. So thank you so much, Laura. I really appreciate it. And I'm keeping the envelope as well, because that is just next level. That is next level. I might try and like cut around it and save it forever and ever, but that's beautiful. I love it. I love it so much. So I will open the graphic novels now. I know Amy's been waiting for me to open them. <laughs> So, let's see. Oh, excellent. We have two. I've only heard of one of them, and they look so cool. So, the first one is The Witch Boy by Molly Knox Ostertag. I love the, I mean, one, I love the cover for this. It says, everyone in Esther's family is born with magic. Boys grow up to be shapeshifters, girls into witches, no exceptions. But Esther can't seem to get the hang of shapeshifting. Instead, he spends his time spying on the witchery lessons the girls are getting. He seems to have a knack for casting spells and wants to know more, but the only person he can share his grown gift with is Charlie, a girl from the non-magical side of town. Then, during a night of shapeshift and practice, one of the boys goes missing. Asa knows he can search for the boy with the witchcraft he's been secretly learning. Could breaking his family's most important tradition save the day or ruin everything? It sounds fab. It sounds absolutely fab. And I do really want to read more middle grade graphic novels, so this is a fantastic start. There's also El Defo, and this one is by Cece Bell. I've heard of this one, I have heard of this one. I believe the main character is deaf, obviously. Starting a new school is scary, even more so with a giant hearing aid strapped to your chest. At her old school, everyone in Cece's class was deaf. Yeah, she is different. She is sure the kids are staring at the phonic ear, the powerful aid that will help her hear her teacher. Too bad it also seems certain to repel potential friends. Then Cece makes a startling discovery. With a phonic ear, she can hear her teacher not just in the classroom, but anywhere her teacher is in the school. In the hallway, in the teacher's lounge, in the bathroom. This is power. Maybe even superpower. Cece is on her way to becoming El Defo. Listener for all. But the funny thing about being a superhero is that it's just another way of feeling different and lonely. Can Cece channel her powers into finding the thing she wants most? A true friend. Oh. Oh, man, this is going to be emotional, isn't it? And I'm loving the art style in this as well. It looks so cool. I love it. So I have two graphic novels now for middle grade, and I love this. I do have When Stars Are Scattered and the Tea Dragon Society series. Those are the only things I've got so far, but these two expanded my collection. And there'll be a lot when I'm bogging myself down with so many novels. I need to break it up a bit with Groff with graphic novels with Groff. Well, thank you so, so much, Amy. I really appreciate it. I'll send you a message on Instagram. So that's it for the update. Yeah, not much else to say. I did nip down the cost to get another paper one night because, oh my God, it's absolutely divine. But yeah, other than that, I'm going to go read The Hat Makers and hopefully finish it tonight. I might also film something, but I'm not too sure what. But I want to film something. It's Sunday, it's the end of the week, and as you probably expect from me, I haven't vlogged in the past couple of days, so that means I've got three books to review <laughs> in one update. I hate doing this. Let's just have a little bit of girl talk right now. I've just finished doing my interview with Ross Montgomery. It was fantastic, so make sure that you watch it. I will link it in the description box or up there somewhere if I can manage to do that. But it went so well, and I just, I think he's a great writer. He wrote The Midnight Guardians. Check it out. It's another fantastic middle grade book. It's the believe -a November book of the month, so buy it. <laughs> but that interview was just so good. So I was actually drinking peach snaps and lemonade for it, and I drank all of it. So I've just topped up there because now I'm done for the week. I feel great. I feel energized. I feel amazing. You know, I am calm. So, um, it was also my mum's 50th birthday yesterday, and we got a takeaway, and it was just really nice, it was a nice day, 
and just what I needed. I kind of didn't read anything until my live sprint with Molly last night. So we did a live at 10 p.m. until like midnight. And that was really fun. So thank you, Molly, for joining me. So on Friday, I did some live reading sprints with Steph, where Buddy read The Forest of Moon and Sword by Amy Raphael. I ended up reading like all of this during the live. I only had like a few pages left at the end of the live. So I just finished it off then. But I hadn't yet finished, because I last spoke to you on Thursday, I hadn't yet finished The Hatmakers then. So at the 10 a.m. live sprint, I started this. And then during the time between, you know, that sprint and the next sprint, I finished The Hatmakers and I absolutely loved this book. It's so, so good. This is like middle grade perfection. That's like the closest I could say <laughs> to actual a perfected review. What? I'm a little bit tipsy. But this was just 100% a five star. It just wasn't not going to be. And this is also the start of a series as well. So I'll definitely go into it this knowing that. Because like the ending like and everything just makes me want to read more. And I can't wait for more. So I'm trying to remember or piece together what I've already told you about this book. I think I was about 150 pages into it. Um, so after that, what I really loved about this book is that we got to see a little bit more of the makers. And the makers are... Like, so obviously our main character is a hat maker. So we also have like boot makers and we had um, glove makers. And they're like families, a bit like Cordelia's family. She lives with her aunt and her uncle. And at this very start, her dad went missing because his ship ended up going into some rocks and sinking. Like we have so many different things to do with family in this book, which I thought was done so well. It made Cordelia such an empathetic character and she was such a great protagonist to follow. I absolutely loved following her. She's like so headstrong. She's quite smart as well. Sometimes she doesn't make the best decisions. However, that really did help with progressing the plot in this. Like, I don't mind in a middle grade when characters don't make the best decisions because it just makes for more adventure and more fun. And I just love that so much. I loved her friendship with Sam and Goose as well. Literally, like, they had such good banter. They went off each other so well. And oh, just the whole world, I love it. I love the fact that hat makers can weave different things into it and that there are different properties and things to do with the ingredients or like the kind of accessories that go onto a hat and how it can make you more brave or can make you more violent. And there's like this huge story about all of these different makers, like the hat makers, the boot makers, the glove makers, etc. And they are making peace clause for the princess because she needs to speak with the French king who is threatening war and like they each need to make like peace clause for it and I'm not going to give away any any spoilers any major plot points or anything but like there is like this huge goal but there's also a rift between all of the makers and I just loved saying this like this was just such a detailed beautifully written book that I just I, I want to recommend to everyone now this and Amari and the Night Brothers literally oh my god I'm so glad I started this week off with them because these have just been phenomenal reads like both five star reads both 100% five star reads but I've already talked about this one so hat makers call me for the second one man and I believe maybe the second one might come out like January 2022, that's too long. That is too long. And I know a lot of people have been dying to say what I thought about this, so I haven't been doing my Goodreads reviews, so you've had to wait to say what I thought about this in Amari. So, so yeah, that was the second book that I finished. I just want to talk about this forever, but I need to do like a proper spoiler-filled one, but it doesn't come out until January, so that's not going to happen yet. Yeah, I think it's January 7th this comes out, and then this one comes out January... 21st in the UK. So then me and Steph did buddy read The Forest of Moon and Soul by Amy Raphael. Kind of feeling like I might be giving this two star. Okay, so it's not terrible by any means. I mentioned what this is about at the start of the vlog and I feel like it still had that premise and I feel like the premise is probably the best part of it. I felt the execution of it was rather lacking. I did really enjoy the atmosphere in this. I thought it was still a really good period piece and I thought it did that well because this is set during the 1600s and I get that sense of Salem in this book. Like I wanted Hocus Pocus but I got Hocus Nocus. <laughs> I felt like there was a lot of missed opportunities. I felt if this was about 100, 150 pages longer, and I know Steph thinks the exact same, if this had been longer and more fleshed out and more detailed, then this would have been a much stronger book. But it did feel like 
there were parts of it missing and I think a lot of it was too convenient. It should have been such a hard task for our main protagonist but as a matter of fact it didn't even seem all that hard in hindsight and I just think there were too many conveniences. Things were wrapped up too nicely and a lot of the tone of this book is quite dark and rather violent but then like there's like an imbalance with that tone because it doesn't really live up to it towards the end. So there's like shifts in its tone so it, it brought the rating down a bit for me. There's also a swear word in the very first chapter so beware of that if you are giving this to your kid. There is the P word, P-I-S-S. It's in relation to uh, something that you use for the toilet and I believe that is probably what they called it at that time. But I just feel like I, I don't think it's 100% necessary to have that in here because then now I can imagine kids saying that. But I feel like kids are smart and they'll know what it means and they'll not, you know, openly say it in front of their parents. But still, I don't know, it's like a swear word. <laughs> so I thought I would let you know. But it was, uh, but what I really enjoyed, I did like the storyline. I really did enjoy the storyline. I just wanted a bit more. I wanted more. So I'm selling for like maybe 2, 2.5. I might say 2.5 and round it up to a 3 on Goodreads because I'm really nice like that. But it's definitely one of the weakest children's books I've read this year. But don't let me put you off. You might actually really love this. Like, please don't let me put you off this one. It's just probably because I literally just read these two. And then just, I don't know, like, I really wanted to love it. I really wanted there to be five. No, I'm only reading four books. Four five-star reads in this week. Well, I don't know, like, I, I would definitely give the author another chance, so I would definitely read more from this author. It's just, I was expecting more, so I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. Uh, but don't let me put you off this. It's still, I thought it was still a good storyline. Which brings me to the last book, which I just finished today, and that is Me, My Dad and the End of the Rainbow by Benjamin Dean. I gave this one... <laughs> Five star, although that looked like ten. Five star. And this is another like really great book and I I say this all the time, I don't read a lot of contemporary middle grades, but when it is to do with LGBTQ plus rep, especially since I was lacking that in my childhood, I just know I would have loved this as a child. This would have reassured me that there was nothing wrong with me back then. There was so much shame in well, in myself, because I thought, I'm not seeing myself represented in books, so does that mean who I am is a bad thing? So, having this book now, oh my gosh, like, I want to put this in every single teacher's hands, I want to put this in every single parent's hands, and be like, look, give this to your child and let them read it for themselves. I love this book. So, it did, I, I don't think this is a spoiler, but it did, be well, because it's like literally the title really, but this does follow Archie and his dad comes out as gay. He doesn't really know how to deal with that because it's like totally brand new to him. He doesn't really understand. He isn't sure how that's going to affect his family. And this story is really about Archie understanding that. It's so beautiful. It, and it ties in beautiful with this cover. You know, what? I want to research this because I want to talk about it, but I don't want to spoil it. Okay, it's it's kind of mentioned in the synopsis. So it says here, when Archie sees a colourful crumble flyer fall out of Dad's pocket, he thinks he may have found the answer. Only problem, the answer might just lie at the end of the rainbow, an adventure away. Together with his best friends, Belle and Seb, Archie sets off on a hot woman and unforgettable journey to try and fix his family, even if he has to break a few rules to do it. And I feel like with this cover as well, you, you know what that means, right? But the end of the rainbow literally means pride. And... Archie thinks that if he goes to a Pride in London, you know, the Pride Festival celebrates LGBTQ plus people, then he will understand and he thinks that there is a way to fix his family if he goes there. And he doesn't tell his family about that, he doesn't tell his dad, his mum. He just goes there with his two best friends, Belle and Seb, and mischief ensues. And oh, it's just so beautiful when, you, when they get there and you see Pride and especially since this is a middle grade, this is a middle grade and you don't really see it a lot in adult books either or young adult books. I mean, you kind of, it's getting there. LGBTQ plus representation is getting there. But in middle grade, it's so rare. But to actually see it, like, loud and proud, there is a pride festival in this and you see so many different people. It's so heartwarming and so brilliant that I 
there, I think this is like an important book for a lot of people. I just know I definitely would have loved this as a child. So I gave this one five stars. I thought it was greatly written. It's so accessible for a lot of kids who might be questioning themselves or if they're going through the same kind of things, then they will take so much from this. Oh, what else? What else? Uh, I love the characters as well. Like Archie, Belle and Seb, they make the worst decisions. <laughs> I've just mentioned this. They make the worst decisions. Like you're like, you're, but if they were making those decisions, then we wouldn't get all of the heartwarming stuff. So I'm again, I'm letting it slide because otherwise, yeah, they wouldn't have gone to Pride and stuff. So the artwork of Isandia Prabat, and I want to mention that every single time because this artwork is phenomenal. Give the illustrators their due because this is beautiful. Um, but it's so reflective of the contents. Like seriously, the book is just as beautiful as the cover or this cover, I don't think this is the actual cover. Stunning from start to finish. Yeah, this is what I'm gonna be recommending for a long time, so buckle up. Yeah, there's just so much representation in this. Black main character, which again, not a lot of in middle grade as well. So this is just, ah, uh, it gives me life. Like this gives me so much hope for 2021 and for the future of middle grade to be more inclusive, to be more diverse. And this is just like, this makes me so hopeful for the future, it really does. Oh, I love it so much. But yeah, I want to stop gushing about it. I will do proper reviews on, on Goodreads and things. So if you want to say more about my thoughts on all of these books, I will do my Goodreads review, hopefully soon. <laughs> I need to fill my fairy little unboxing because that recently came. I'll probably do this after this, actually. So yeah, that's all I have for this week. Read four fantastic, three um fantastic middle grade arcs this week. And all of these were five stars. I feel awful about this one. I really do. I'm so sorry. It just wasn't entirely for me. I'm going to stop apologising. But I'm, I I feel like I've had such a successful week. So thank you to these books for, for giving me life. <laughs> so today actually marks the start of Gilmore-thon. And I, well, I'll see if I can read some before bed. I need, I've got a lot of stuff to edit. But I doubt I'll get anything read, really. So I'll have to start Gilmore-thon on Monday, tomorrow. Uh, but I do have my books here that I'm going to be reading for my vlog next week. So I will actually be reading Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen instead of The Phantom of the Opera. Unless I have time to read The Phantom of the Opera. I'm just, like, so in the mood for Northanger Abbey. I've been holding off on this for such a long time. Also reading A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J Mass next week as well. So if you want to say what my thoughts are on this, Gilmore-thon vlog. And also The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. Miss Bourne book one. So a lot of, I mean, all adult. So I kind of am taking a little bit of a break from Believe the Thorn, our like middle grade. Saying that though, I'll still be on like on the socials, still be uploading videos, I'll still be on the Discord, I'll still be doing reading sprints and all of that. So don't worry about any of that. And I'll probably read like some graphic novels or something. Again, thank you so much to Amy for sending me El Defo and Witch Boy. Amy also sent me Goosebumps, uh, a Goosebumps graphic novel that came a couple of days after, so thank you so much for that. And I will probably read the Goosebumps one, actually, like, during the week. Oh, I've had all of them. I feel like I'll fit in some middle grade graphic novels during the week, so thank you again so much, Amy. But yeah, that is the end of this vlog. I'll stop rambling now. Uh, if you enjoyed, please leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already. Leave all the comments down below. I'd love to chat to you guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!